Hi everyone, it's Chris Petrie. Thanks again for coming by. This is the Extreme Beginner Series. Here in this video, we're actually going to cover how to paint a simple and beautiful seascape style painting with a boathouse and a boat, beautiful sky, some beautiful uh, washes for the um, bay here. We have a bay with beautiful uh, blues and greens for the bay colors. And we're going to um, do this painting. We're going to show you step by step how, how to actually create this. And we're going to kind of do it in a fun way. We're actually going to create it like a recipe. So everyone out there, I know some of you, probably many of you actually, you know, you understand a recipe is for cakes, for, you know, a dinner, for, din you know, dinners, for lunches, for breakfast. You're making anything, you're going with a recipe, right? You have like parts to the recipe. You need this ingredient, that ingredient, and then you need the process, how much to cook it, how long to cook it. The same idea with this painting here. So you're going to see how we do it like a recipe to... Uh, have this beautiful result of a beautiful uh, watercolor painting right like this here and it's just a basic like seascape painting you know very simple lots of beautiful colors all mixes of colors warm and cool colors everywhere stick with us here on this uh, video and we're going to show you step by step how to create this gorgeous painting I'm glad you're here and we are going to have a lot of fun just stick with it step by step and you'll see it, it's a lot more fun and a lot more easy if you're just sticking with this uh, same formulas over and over that we cover on this channel every month, every week, every month and every year. We're always doing videos here and we cover the same steps over and over. So here we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to be doing our uh, basic format of what we do every video for my channel, whether it's extreme beginners or if we're doing regular videos. You can tune in, you can subscribe, and you can paint any paintings we're doing on this channel. Not only Extreme Beginners, you can tackle the more advanced videos, the more advanced paintings, by just sticking with the same format here that we're showing on this video. So if you're an Extreme Beginner, don't be afraid. Jump in, gra grab a hold, do the other videos that we're showing on this channel, because you're just as much talented enough to follow along and just jump along and do the, the same steps that we're doing here over and over as we go. So let's start out. We'll get started in just a second and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we just saw the finished painting, everybody. The finished painting, that's all we're concerned about. Work from my finished painting. Hit the pause button on YouTube. Work from that. That's all you have to really do. If you want, you can also uh, pause the video on the finished drawing and then draw from that finished drawing that we do here on this video. You can hit pause and draw that. And then you can fast forward to the finished painting when we're all completed. Pause on that and use that for your finished painting when you're using all your colors and everything. But the main fun of this is you're just going step by step to create a beautiful painting and a simple process as extreme beginners would would create their artwork. So here, we're just kind of going through the process. If you're an extreme beginner, you're just starting out, you need to know the process. You need to know the steps. It's like a, a recipe. If you're going to create a beautiful dinner or a cake or anything like that, you need a recipe, right? Does that make sense? You need a recipe. So we're going to give you the recipe right now. We're going to go one at a time, different steps you need to take to get to your beautiful finished painting. Let's start out. First thing, of course, you need your ingredients. Those might be like your palette. So we have our palette here, um, a prang, prang palette, moist, uh, semi-moist paintings, semi-moist paints. <clears throat> so that's, that's the first thing we need that. And then you have your brush, which comes with the paint set. Look at that. So you have a brush right here that comes with the paint set. So you have that, and then you might, you know, have an additional brush. I have an additional uh, Simply Simmons number six round brush. I got this for like two dollars or three dollars online. So you can add another larger brush to your um, painting setup if you're if you're an extreme beginner. You're not going out and buying one hundred dollar brushes. You're just starting out. You might not like this. You might not like doing watercolor paintings. I don't know, but if you're starting out with the introduction of simple palettes very inexpensive this is like a five dollar palette with paints 
another you know brush comes with the palette so for five dollars you've got your palette and your brush perfect then you might add a brush here for another five dollars and you have a little larger brush you can see how that's a little larger than the one that comes with the set so you can have a little easier time putting larger washes on but but this is good if you can get these if you can get this going an extra brush maybe one brush and then your paper you know you try to use the best paper you can I'm using Arches rough paper here it's got the orange cover on it and they make an Arches smooth paper which has got a pink cover on it but for the most part you can use any paper watercolor paper that you can find that you want to invest in it's up to you so let's start out here now so we have the ingredients we have our praying palette with plenty of paints um, we just did a simple thing we rearranged our colors so we have all the warm colors here and the cooler colors over here and you can lift these right out of the you can lift these right out of the uh, palette like this and rearrange them and that's how I rearranged them I just took them out when you get the set in the mail if you order it or if you go to the store and buy it you, you know it's, they're gonna be all mixed differently what I did is I take my paints I pull them out all of them out so I take every paint pan like this and I take it all out and then I rearrange it and I say okay I'm gonna take all my warm colors and I put my red here my orangey red here my orange my light orange my yellow brown green green then over here I'm getting to the really cool colors the greenish viridian type green and the blues and the purples so you can kind of see how I arranged my palette that's the best way you want to do it so whenever you're going to work with your paints you always know hey warmer colors are over here cooler colors are over here so when you're painting it'll help you it'll help you to be more organized if you can organize your palette this way okay that's all that I just mentioned that that's one of the things we mentioned here as we start so first thing is we want to just make sure we create with a pencil you can use an office pencil this is an office style pencil you can use a pencil like this office pencil and we just want to go around and make our border this is our border of our painting like so we do that that's like the first step <clears throat> we have our ingredients right here our palette paints we have our brushes now we do our border. Now, as we get started, we say, all right, let's, we're gonna paint a nice, beautiful little boat scene maybe, or maybe just a little scene along the water. I'm not gonna get too, um, you know, uh, we're not gonna get too bogged down with um, worries about what our composition is, what we're painting. Let's just do something real simple to start out with. We're just beginning. Our journey with watercolors, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves with a zillion different um, type of subject matter. Let's keep it real simple. Let's do um, maybe about a third of the way up. We'll make a line very lightly across. That's going to be our shoreline. And then maybe over here we're going to do a really light sketch of a, a boathouse. Maybe this is a boathouse, like so. So we'll do a little boathouse. I'm going to go over this darker so you can see. So we have a little boathouse here. A boathouse here and maybe we'll just leave it like that. And then we have some shoreline over here. And then we have some more. And then maybe we're going to maybe erase these lines over here maybe we made our hills maybe we don't want to make our hills all the way here maybe we want to leave this water over here and we have some hills over here okay so we're just sort of getting a feel for things let's make it real simple and then let's have some trees over here I'm just scribbling in some trees scribble in some trees we're doing the first preliminary sketch so let's let's take this in steps so everyone kind of can see what we're doing here we don't want to hide any information we want to keep you so the first thing is we we get our paper we set our paper up and then we're going to do a preliminary sketch so we have our border we make our border around our paper like so and then we're going to do our preliminary sketch 
So let's make our preliminary sketch lighter, lighter. So that's going to be like this, lighter. We're not doing a finished drawing, just a preliminary sketch like that. So you can see that here, all right? Water is here, preliminary sketch, water, some trees over here, like that. And there we go, preliminary sketch. So that's the first thing. Pre limb sketch, preliminary sketch. That's the first thing we do. So you see I did that here with my pencil. Preliminary sketch is very light, I know. You might have a hard time seeing that. That's why I did it like this. So you can more or less see a little darker over here on this side of the boathouse. There's a little boathouse here. Like that. Some trees over here. Okay, light sketch. Just to get everything laid out on our paper. The reason why we do this is because we do not we do not want to do this where we have we do not want to do this if we have our rectangle like this and we're doing a, a creating a work of art we're creating a painting we do not want to make a small little house like this in the middle of our paper like that with some trees and some water and that's all we have can you under can you see that does that make sense to you can you see that you want to avoid this at all costs doing something like this where you have all of this paper all of this real estate over here you have tons of paper you have your whole you have your entire watercolor paper you do not want to make a tiny little bit of subject matter like this and then try to and then try to paint that draw that and paint that like that what we want to do is we want to fill that rectangle with with information we want to have a nice big shack here and trees and water over here like that. Does this make sense? You want to fill that that rectangle, your rectangle, your paper, you want to fill that with ma subject matter like this. You want to zoom into your scene and get a lot of excitement here. So you have some trees, some water, you have your you have your um, fishing shack over here like this, right? And then you have your trees over here, some green, we're going to do lots of greens. So we're going to do this painting. Just stay tuned here because we're going to have fun. We're going to do this here. We're going to have the trees over here and then some water and then some more, maybe some sand and a little bit of some weeds over here like this. But can you see how much more exciting that is versus if you go ahead and you take a large piece of your watercolor paper and then you go ahead and you only draw a tiny bit of information on there. That's terrible. That looks awful. So let's not do that. So we have our preliminary sketch now on our paper. Now we're going to do our contour drawing, which is we're going to go over the top of our preliminary sketch once we have the general idea of what we want to do here and we do it very lightly. We do it very lightly with our preliminary sketch here. with our trees and our mountains and our water. Okay, preliminary sketch. Now let's do our second part. So our second part is, our first part was the preliminary sketch, which we did. Prelim sketch. Two, contour drawing. You can number them differently if you want to organize them differently. You're the artist. You create your own lists of what you want to do. You might want to jot stuff down on some paper. You might want to keep some notes. You might want to put some of these little note type things in a manila folder and just keep them for yourself so that you can kind of keep organized. 
But you know, you want to start out with your preliminary sketch, which is you want to lay out the overall design of your painting within your rectangle, within your paper, like this. And that's what we did here. We did a preliminary sketch like this. And we did a boathouse, and we're going to have some water, some trees, some mountains, some interesting sky. We're going to have a fun time. Let's continue on. So now we have it. Preliminary sketch. Now we're going on to the two. Contour drawing. Okay, contour drawing. Now we're just going to go in darker. So I'm just going to go like so. And this is the back. This is the little bit of mountains and there's some hills here. Some hills over here. There's some trees. Like so. Look at that. Then we're going to do our boathouse here. Look at that. How cool that looks. Oh, a nice boathouse. Just like that. No big deal. A little boathouse with a... You might have to hash this out on some paper before you... You could make it even more simple. If you want to make this more simple and you don't want to have this three-dimensional building, you can make this building two-dimensional. Let's make a boathouse in two dimensions. Roof and the building, like so. That's all you need. And maybe a chimney up here, like that. And that's all you need. And a couple of windows, maybe a door over here, like so. So you don't have to, you don't have to do a three-dimensional building like this. You can keep it two-dimensional like this. So if you're afraid and you're maybe just new at, at drawing and you don't have the skills of maybe doing three-dimensional drawings, no problem. Just do a two-dimensional building like this, a roof and a wall, just like that. And a door and a window. And there you have it. And then a roof right here. That. That simplifies it if you don't want to do a three-dimensional drawing. You might want to go for the gusto and do a three-dimensional drawing like this. It's no problem. Basically, this is, if you want to look at that, it's basically, basically that three-dimensional building. Boathouse is, I'm tracing it. I'm actually tracing it right over my drawing. It's basically a triangle with a rectangle or a square underneath it, like that. That's a square with a rectangle or a pyramid. And then you're just making it a little bit of a angle like that. And then a rectangle here. So you can see three-dimensional drawings are not that difficult. You're just kind of breaking it down into pieces. Here's a triangle and a square. You got a square, a triangle, and then a rectangle, but you have a little bit of an angle on that rectangle there and a little bit of an angle here. You might have to hash that out on some scrap paper first to get the feel for it, but a couple times and you'll have it. And then there you go. But if you want to keep it simple, you can just do the two-dimensional roof and wall like that. Okay, we're continuing on. We're almost done with our contour drawing. So here, contour drawing, we're just continuing on. We're getting our hill here in the background, and then our water is here. There's another hill back here. Then we start getting some trees. We just do some haphazard lines just to know we're gonna do some tree shapes over here. And like that, and there we have it. Then here we got another line coming across. And then here, another line. This is the shoreline here. And then another bit of shoreline here. Like so. And then maybe some more water here. And then maybe another bit of shoreline over here with some weeds and things like that. So we'll put some, some lines for weeds. And that's our contour drawing, like that. And then you can make some... We're going to make our door there. with our, there's a little bit of a dock here. This is a boathouse, so we have a dock here, like that, and maybe a couple windows on this boathouse, like so. And then maybe there's another dock back here, too, with some pilings, you can make some pilings there, and, and that should be fine. And then maybe we'll make a little boat, maybe we'll make a boat over here.
And there's a boat here. That's all. Okay. Perfect. Contour drawing done. Now we're going to go to part three. So we have the first two parts done. We have the preliminary sketch done, contour drawing done. Contour drawing, we got the darker final drawing done. Contour drawing, let's work on step three, painting. That's the fun part, yeah. All right, we're gonna do the whole enchilada here. We're gonna do part one, preliminary sketch. We did the part two contour drawing where we got our final drawing in where we went over in darker pencil and now we're going to work up to part three the painting okay let's get our painting started but first let's take a break always take breaks when you're doing watercolors unless you feel like you don't need them but most people will need breaks after maybe five or ten or twenty minutes or a half an hour you might need to take a little break you sit down you have a cup of tea you know a little sip of water you relax you might need to do that if not, keep going. It's up to you. You're the artist. You know what you have to do. But I'm going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to start our painting, okay? So again, we're doing this in parts, like a recipe to a cake or a beautiful recipe for a dinner or a luncheon or a breakfast, whatever it is, you're going to have to have steps. Step one, preliminary sketch. We got that done. Step two, contour drawing. We did that, the darker drawing over the top of the preliminary sketch where we just draw in the darker lines. We get it all absolutely in here solid so we can see it. This is what we're going to be painting. And step three, the painting. Okay, we'll come right back. We'll start the painting. I'm hope you're, I hope you're having a fun time here. We're just enjoying ourselves. We're having an exciting time. This is just a real sim simple version of doing drawing and painting in watercolor. I do this all the time on my channel. So if you watch my beginners, extreme beginners videos, you'll see that I'm doing the same exact thing as I do in my normal videos, which is just, I'm doing the same thing here. We're just getting it a little more basic when we do our extreme beginners, but you extreme beginners out there, you're going to get right into it. And before long, you're going to be jumping right into all the other videos and following along, and you'll be right up to speed with everyone else here on this channel. So don't worry about it. Just get the, f the fundamentals of the process we have here, which is preliminary sketch, contour drawing over the top of your preliminary sketch in the darker pencil lines, and then we're ready to paint. Okay, let's come back and paint in about five or ten minutes, and you'll see how easy this turns out. Okay, be right back. Okay, we just took a break here. Everybody, I get so fired up when I'm talking about all the ingredients to the cake, all the ingredients to the recipes. I got the recipes to the to the nice uh, breakfast or lunch or dinner. You know, that's how we have to do our watercolors. We have to kind of make it like a recipe. You know, you have parts to your recipe, and then you have to have the recipe in front of you on your... Um, magazine or your book if you have some recipes or you write it down and then when you have that set next to you then you start cooking and you start making your painting so think of it just like you know doing that you're making a cake you're making a a little uh, dinner or something like that you have a recipe and then you you move on through the, the the parts the ingredients you start adding it all together and then you start making everything together so this is what we're doing so we talked about our three parts we had our preliminary sketch, which we did, which was light pencil lines. Then we went with our contour drawing, which is our darker lines, where we dark used our dark pencil lines and got our final drawing completed. And now we're doing our painting. So that's all. We're on, we're on part three right now. And then here we have a little spritzer bottle with some clean, fresh water. And I'm just spritzing my palette, my paints again. I've been spritzing, I'm spritzing these you know, along as I go. And we have our paint brushes here, so we're ready to go. We got our paint brushes. We're, we're going to start our painting. Now, the thing is, um, let's um, just take one uh, step back here and just say, well, how are we going to paint this? What, kind, what colors are we going to use? Okay, you're going to use my final painting as your, your guide as to how you're going to paint this. But right now, we're working in the middle of the video, and you're not really seeing that. You might have 
not saved it or you're not paused on the original painting that I did, which I put in the beginning of the video. So now we're just going to look at it and say, hey, you know what? We want to do warm and cool colors, which would be red, orange, yellows, and blues and greens. We want to mix warm colors and cool colors all the way through the painting at the same time. We don't want to just go with blue. We don't want to go with one color blue and say blue sky, blue sky. No, we want to mix some blue in the sky, some different color blues, maybe a little purple, maybe a little gold color in the skies to get a little gray color, or some brown and blue to get some gray colors. Let's follow along with me. Does that make sense? We want to mix up our colors a lot. We don't just want to go with one or two colors and try to do the painting that way. We want to mix our colors. So let's let's have that idea in mind. So this is the paint uh, brush that comes with the painting. We can use this for some f details because it's pretty sharp and has a good point. But this one here that I bought uh, online, Simply Simmons, this is a little bit more, has more, um, hairs on the brush which means I can add more paint so we can go a little better we can go a little faster with our paint all right <clears throat> so let's start out let's do some trees first so we'll get some greens here and some blues some greens some blues some greens some blues some blues first then some greens over here greens blues some brown Let's mix a little brown in there too. All right, let's start doing our, our trees over here. So our trees are on the sides over here of the boathouse, okay? Okay, now, little yellow, let's use a little yellow. So start to mix in your colors, a little orange, like that. Okay. Then over here we can make it lighter. Let's make it very light and very subtle over here to the sides of the painting. So let's take the idea of when someone is looking at your painting, they're going to be looking at a certain part of your painting, let's say the boathouse. They're going to look at we're going they're going to look at this section of the painting more or less. That's the part they're going to look at the most. So over here on the sides of the painting, you can make it subtle. You don't have to add really dark and light colors. You can go with more grayed down colors. You can see I just kind of mix these up here. Right? You can see that I'm just doing some like that. Then over here, when we're going toward the center, let's get more. And if you make a mistake, lift it up with some tissue. Take a tissue and blot up some paint. If you have a problem where you made a brush stroke and it doesn't look so good. There you go. All right, we'll take some yellow and some brown and some orange. And we'll do a little bit of We'll do a little bit of a hill here, like that. Leave some whites in there, white of the paper. So you, maybe a little bit of light bouncing around in there. There you go. And then you have some orange now. Let's go over here, orange, red, orange, red. orange, red. Mix all your colors around, please. If anything, just remember to mix warm and cool colors everywhere. So you can see I'm doing blue, orange, red. Make it an uh, extravaganza of colors. What you want to avoid is just using one color from your palette and thinking that's going to look good. That will not look good at all. So as long as you're understanding, as an extreme beginner, try to mix as many colors. You're way better off just mixing a zillion colors together and putting it on your palette 
and putting it on your painting versus just using like two colors. Like if you just went, okay, I'm going to do a blue sky and then I'm going to use some green trees like that and then maybe some, I don't know, brown and gold for the, for the land, for like the hills and stuff. So you can imagine how boring that is if you just had those three colors there. Instead, keep mixing. Blend all these colors together, reds, oranges, blues, there we go, some blue. Keep mixing all your colors. Make it a, a, the whole enchilada of colors you have on your palette. Try to use all of those colors. And then here's some orange, oh this is actually some green and blue with some splashing. So we're going to do some trees here. You can see that there, we're doing some trees. That looks really good. Some green. Maybe we add some brown to the green, make it a little bit warmer. And then maybe some gold and some brown. Gold and brown and orange. We don't want our greens to look just boring. Let's add some oranges and browns to our greens. Do some interesting... I scrape a little bit with my fingernail. And again over here, a little bit, a little bit subtle. There we go, look at that. I've got my main green color, which is blue and green, here. Then I take some orange and brown and mix that right in there. Look at that. There you have tons of beautiful mixtures of colors and it won't be boring. You don't want a boring watercolor. You want us an exciting watercolor with Tons of action going on. Action, action, action. <clears throat> Look at that. Beautiful. Maybe a little bit of purple over here. Purple, distant mountains. Like that. Maybe a little more purple over here. Splash on some purple just to give it a little interesting look at that then some brown and gold like that everyone can you see that look how much color I put into that then a little bit of mixtures of grays here You can see all my colors that I mixed here as I went. So that's your guide. You can look at this and kind of see what I was doing here. Everything is being mixture, you know, mixtures. Everything is, uh, we got some black here. So let's use some black. If it starts to have a problem where it starts to blossom cauliflower, it gives you a problem, lift up with your tissue. Like that. There you go. Now, ocean water. There we go. Let's go. Ocean water. Blues and greens. There we go. Look at that. Lots of water. So I'm going to go in and get, I'm going to go into my water bucket. I have tons of water. I have a nice cante canteen here with tons of fresh water. Just start flooding on the water, on the paper. You want to do that. You see? The greens, the blues, look at this. Get it on there, then take it and just start flooding your paper. 
take the canteen or whatever water uh, container you have or a glass of water, whatever you're using for your water container, just get it on there. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at how good that looks. Look at this. That's watercolor. You just get the water on there, some fresh, clean water, and And you notice I'm using all my blues here. You have lots of great color variations with your blues and greens here. Right? Look at this. This palette is incredible. This Prang palette that you're using, this beginner's palette is incredible. It has phenomenal colors. Look at this. Perfect. So now you have your blues, your ocean, your water. This is the bay here. This is the bay, and you have your bay colors, you know, your greens, your blues. You're going to add some golds and browns in there too. You don't want to just be a, a person that doesn't think about mixing some grays in your colors. Let's mix some grays in there. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. Then the foreground over here. Brown, orange, darker orange, brown, a little darker there. There we go. There you go. Browns, oranges, yellow. There you go. And we're going to let this all dry. And a little lighter. Okay, and then we just do the boat. And we have a little bit of a nice red boat. A little bit of shadow under there. Okay. Maybe a little shadow under here. Do an orange roof here. Maybe we'll make that a red roof, like so. So we have some exciting colors here. And look at that. And I lift up with some tissue just to lift up some of that paper uh, pa paint that's running. Okay, and then we have a little chimney over here, like that, and a little top to the chimney there. All right, everybody, we've done a lot of painting right now. I hope you'll follow. I'm hope you're following along with this. 
again, it's just mixing lots of colors, warm and cool. You saw that I did not just use the old one or two colors and try to paint the whole painting with one or two colors, no. I mix tons of colors in this here, so as long as you're mixing tons of colors and you're kind of getting the general idea that, yeah, you can use a lot of different colors when you're making your greens for your trees. Yes, you can mix in some golds, you can mix in some oranges with your, your greens with your trees. Same thing with your water. You're using mostly blues with your waters, but yes, you can mix in a little bit of browns and golds with your water to kind of give everything a nice blend of mixtures of colors throughout the painting. So you're always mixing all of your colors that you're painting. Within this painting, you're mixing all of those colors together with all of the different parts of your painting so that your painting doesn't look... Um, your painting doesn't look like it's... Um, non-harmonious. You want it to look like it's harmonizing together. All the colors are working together. I put greens of the trees in the greens of the water. I put blue of the water in blues over here of the building. I put blues of the water in blues of the trees. Mix all of your colors here. Just mix tons of colors and you'll have it. You'll be much more happier with the result you get. Let's come right back and we'll do a sky wash. Once we get our sky wash in, we'll be done, okay? So I promise you this is a fun, quick watercolor, not too long, not too, you know, uh, we have a pretty much a really good idea of the recipe of what we're doing. We've got our drawing completed, then we get our paintings going, we're just mixing lots of colors, you saw what I used here for my colors, you can slow it down, write down the colors, whatever you gotta do, doesn't matter, or if you just wanna go for the gusto and um, have a fun time, do that whatever it takes. You have a fun time with it. And then all we're going to do is the sky wash last and we'll be completed, okay? So we'll be right back. We'll do the sky wash and we'll be completed with this painting. And extreme beginners, you will get it. It's just a matter of doing the steps together with us here on this channel. We'll work together. We'll get these beautiful paintings done. You'll have a fun time and we'll see you in just a second, okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back again. We're gonna finish up our sky wash like we talked about, mixing lots of colors. You can see here we did tons of mixtures of colors. And uh, that's the key to this painting. So maybe I'll take a little bit of a shadow here for under that roof here, like that. Maybe there's a little And then maybe we'll do a little bit of some darker darks for our pilings here. So you can kind of see I'm going to do a little bit of details here. I'm going to use some black and some brown to maybe do my some pilings and the docks here. Just like that. And you can do it any way you want. And then maybe we're going to do a little details here. And then we can use our, we can use our, our more fine pointed, so you can see, I use my fine pointed little bit of smoke. We got a little smoke there on the boat. And maybe we're going to use a little more red here. Isn't that exciting? You use some nice, gorgeous red here for the boat. And maybe a little bit in the water there, too. And you just mix it into the water for the reflection. That looks fine. And then you kind of mix it out this way, like that. That looks all right. So you have some red of the boat reflecting into the water. If you go with too much, you can always lift up a little with the tissue, like so. And then you can do a little, take your nail and just do a little 
if you feel you can use a bamboo bamboo stick bamboo uh, pen to get some scratch out some lights maybe a little bit of some shadow under there like so there we go all right let's do our sky wash now before we do our sky wash let's clean up the palette we've used a lot of colors here best bet when you start using a lot of colors in your palette the best bet is to actually go in with your paper towel and just clean up the palette and then this way you can have fresh clean colors as you're finishing up your painting and you're doing your sky color especially whenever you're doing a sky color always remember your sky washes are always going to be predominantly blue and you don't want too many different colors mixing in with your sky wash I mean you could add some darker colors to your sky wash some grayer colors but you'd want to give yourself the advantage of doing some sky washes that are mostly blue and mostly transparent so I'm going to empty out my water clean my water I want to make sure my water bucket you can see how my water is kind of murky if you can see that there it's kind of murky looking let me uh, let me get some fresh clean water and there you can see fresh clean water Then I'm going to take that fresh clean water and just put a little fresh clean water on the paper. Take some fresh clean water, put it on your paper, your watercolor paper there. Splash some on, not everywhere, but in spots here and there. That's going to give you an interesting look of some really beautiful washes of watercolor with a lot of water mixed onto your paper. Okay, so you saw here, I've added some fresh clean water right out of my canteen. So I added some fresh clean water onto my paper in the sky areas, but not everywhere. I left dry paper on certain areas. Not everywhere, just hit and miss, here and there. Now we go in and we get some blue, sky wash blue. Look at that. Um, some blue here. Okay, some green maybe, like that. Maybe some brown to mix in a little bit of brown and black for maybe some areas where there might be a little bit of clouds. That's an option. You don't always have to use that option, but you, you do have it for your, uh, if you want. So let's do that. Okay. Lots of blue, lots of green, a little bit of brown mixed in there. There you go. Okay. And then you just take your mixes and just put it on there. Don't be afraid of it. Darker colors go up higher up in the sky here. Darker colors up here. Okay. Darker colors up here at the top. And then as you move down, you go lighter. So you just use lighter colors as you go down this way. And you just do your parallel strokes this way. Mix it around, have a good time. A couple splashes, a couple splashes down here. A couple splashes up here, like so.
Then you can take a tissue if you want. You can take a tissue and maybe blot up a couple spots to give it that kind of uh, fluffy clouds. Maybe there's some fluffy clouds here and there. Kind of blot up a couple spots. Blot up a couple spots here in the water if you want. And that's it, everybody. You you can see this here <clears throat> with the Extreme Beginner series. We're covering the basics, so you have the basics here. You have your contour drawing. You have your you know you have your preliminary sketch first, your contour drawing second, and your painting third. So you have three parts. And as you paint, you're just remembering you're using lots of colors. Mixing up your colors everywhere, warm and cool everywhere. You just don't want to go in there and do one or two colors. You want to mix all your colors here in your palette. And when it gets too much colors mixed up and too much muddy looking colors, you go in, you clean up your palette with your paper towels or your um, tissues so that you have a fresh clean palette to work with, especially if you're going to do your sky wash. See how we got our sky wash in? Very simple, very clean, lots of blue color, a little bit of grays with the blacks and the browns up here on the top, but that was because we cleaned the palette. You want to clean your palette uh, often so that you can, you know, keep your colors, you know, looking fresh and, and clean. You wouldn't want to have a ton of um, muddy looking colors in your sky. You would want to control the muddiness of your sky, if anything, with a little bit of black and brown at the tops, a couple of rain clouds here and there. But for the most part, you can kind of see how we've got this completed in a very simple fashion. We stuck with our game plan, doing it like a recipe, right? The recipe was contour drawing. First, we did the preliminary sketch, though, to make sure we had everything just the way we want it, right inside of our rectangle here. Once you have everything right inside your rectangle the way you want it, then you do your contour drawing, your darker pencil drawing. And then thirdly, you do your painting, you get your washes on, and you make sure that you're mixing lots of colors, warm and cool everywhere, warm and cool. Even though these are green trees, I used gold. I used gold in my green trees. I used some blue in my green trees. I used some orange in my green trees. Then when I did my water, I mixed all of the colors. I used blues, greens, reds, browns, golds, but mostly blue. And then in my sky wash, I used mostly blue. But I use a little bit of brown and black up here at the top to get a little bit of a uh, stormy cloud look up here at the top. So that is it. Everybody, the Extreme Beginner series right here. Keep watching. If you're an Extreme Beginner, <laughs> I hope you're watching. Keep watching because these are the fundamentals that you're going to use to build your uh, repertoire of watercolors. Here it happens to be a seascape type painting. We might do a landscape painting the next time on Extreme Beginners, and you'll learn the same things over and over, and we'll just keep going, working on the same methods, the same techniques over and over to get a beautiful result, a beautiful watercolor painting, and we will um, see you on the next video. Thanks so much for coming by, and happy painting, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Petri. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for stopping by my channel here. We're doing watercolor art 24-7. Um, we're actually uh, going to do a, a delightful painting today. We're going to use some simple um, subject matter. We'll do a still life. We have a coffee cup here. Um, I have a um, plastic fruit, which is an orange. Uh, styrofoam. 
So you can use real uh, subject matter. You can. I have uh, a large amount of um, faux fruit. Um, if you look up faux fruit online, you can find um, really all kinds of great. Uh, you know, every apples, oranges, grapes. Um, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, pears and uh, different style apples, green apples. You know, Granny Smith apples. Red Delicious apples, every kind of fruit and vegetable you can imagine. Um, styrofoam. This looks very real, very convincing. They have a really beautiful detail the way they created these. So you can you can find some really good quality um, faux fruit. And what's nice about this is you can put it into a um, a bag or a, a duffel bag and bring it anywhere you want and practice watercolor and. You can also um, leave it in the studio. You don't have to worry about uh, anything like um, bugs or things going rot, you know, r rotting or anything like that. You know, I leave my faux fruit in my studio, and um, I have everything: limes, lemons, you name it. Like I said, all you know, as much as they've made uh, every kind of faux fruit and vegetable you can, you know you can imagine. So I'm going to use just a simple orange. I'm going to use a simple white um, coffee cup. I'll use also a, a, a pitcher. Um, maybe we'll, we'll create, maybe I'll make a pitcher, you know, just like for, um, sometimes I'll just recall, I have an, I have a numerous amount of pitchers, uh, clear glass pitchers for flowers. I have um, uh, some, I have a couple white pitchers for flowers. So I have all different kinds of um, still life um, things in, in my studio that I use and also sometimes I'll just draw from memory and um, maybe we'll do that here for some of our items but again you know be creative set up a couple little still life uh, setting setups for yourself and and just practice on those and here we're gonna we'll, we'll do that we'll set up a nice uh, a cross ring I'm just gonna set up a little few things I'm gonna Take this here and we're going to tape this down. Let's tape down our paper, our watercolor paper. Tape down our palette. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll tape this down first here. And it's always good to tape down uh, our watercolor paper and then tape tape off our sections that we want to this way when we're done with our exercises and our compositions we can just take the tape off and we have a finished painting right there waiting you know waiting to put into a scrapbook or we can put it on the wall and take you know uh, look at it for a few weeks or so and kind of critique it ourselves that's always good to do you know you take your your paintings and you hang them up in your house or give them away you know you give them away sometimes too maybe you're gonna sell them a few times here and there to friends or um, you know gallery shows whatever you do but as an artist uh, it's always good to take your work and you know display it in your your studio in your house and and you can learn from it and say, I like that, I like this, I like that other thing I did there. And maybe I'd like to do this different next time. I think I could make it look better in this section or that section or so forth. So always um, try to improve a little bit each time. And also enjoy the victories that you have when you're painting. So here let's go in and we'll do a, just a simple composition. Just so we can get some cool ideas here. Of So I think I'll... So here I'm doing a pitcher, and then I'm going to do my coffee cup, and the saucer, and I'm going to come around this way, and we'll do our orange here. So this is just a um, fun composition 
we're trying to um, and maybe we'll have a little bit of fun design on this we'll do some blue blue ornamentation on this and we'll do some more uh, design here too some uh, Some more ornamentation on our just lightly here I'm gonna do a very light um, just so I remember to have some uh, ornamentation and interesting uh, details on our uh, vase here our white vase in this exercise we should keep things loose keep things fun uh, maybe we'll have, we'll pretend there's a little plant over top, over top of this here, some flowers. Maybe there's a, a larger vase over here and there's some, some leaves and things here. So we'll just make an indication of that. Okay, that, that looks good. And again here we're having fun, we're just going to mix some colors and have a good time here. We're not worried too much about, is this a, you know, award-winning, uh, you know, painting or anything like that. We're just having fun. We're going to practice the fundamentals of watercolor right now. So right now we just did our contour drawing. We went in, we looked at our subject matter. It could be from a book, from a picture. You might set up your um, still life with some, some cups and saucers and so forth and fruit you can use real fruit you can buy faux fruit um, and vegetables and all kinds of interesting things you could if you don't like those type of things you can set up things that you have around the house that you like maybe um, you name it anything kitchen items um, some of uh, favorite um, heirlooms things like that anything that you want you can just really set them up and, and draw them and paint them so here I'm just doing a nice loose uh, representation of coffee cup and a an orange and a, a white vase we're going to do some blue ornamentation on this and there's maybe a little um, some leaves here and let's see how we can uh, just make this fun all right I'll get my brushes here Okay, and I have uh, fresh clean water. Okay, let's uh, get right in and we'll do some of the darks. Let's take some of that blue. For our ornamentation, that is French ultramarine blue mixed with a little burnt umber, maybe a little burnt sienna. Okay. And maybe we'll blot out a little bit there. And maybe we'll go in with some sap green and some olive green. And we'll get a little bit of that leaf uh, shape in there. This is fun. Look at this. How easy is that? This is just absolute fun with colors. And all we did was really set down a nice little bit of um, contour drawing. Nothing fancy. And now we're letting our... Uh, Paints do the fun, the work. A little splashing. Loosen things up, splash a little bit, have fun. Don't worry too much about how perfect it looks. We're having an enjoyable time here. All right, so we have uh, a little bit of blue for our ornament here. A nice little stripe going along the top of the vase. Let's do some cobalt blue
and just a little flicking around of the brush to pretend we know what we're doing. There we go. Another great little bit of design. And how about here? Maybe a little bit of uh, mineral violet. We'll go over here. Mineral, mineral violet. Purple. Mixed in with a little cobalt blue. Change up the color a little bit. There we go. Another little flick of some detail. And we got it. There we go. And a little more here. Maybe some more in detail on this uh, beautiful vase here. And again, we'll go right into the French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. And let's do a little... Okay, now... We'll use our uh, needlepoint brush. And we'll even, we'll even get into some more fine detail. Even This is pretty fine detail right here, but let's get even to some additional fine detail. Let's, uh, Perfect. Okay, now let's take a little bit of that green that we have mixed here and a little bit of the blue and purple over here and let's do some shadowing. Maybe a little cerulean blue too. A little bit of uh, yellow ochre too. Mix in a little bit of warm. Okay, now we're doing uh, negative shape painting. We're taking this area here and we're accentuating the light on this side of the vase over here. So the light's coming from here. If we want to make sure, we just take a light insignia like that with a light bulb. And we say the light's coming from here. A little bit, a little more of a yellow ochre, just to uh, warm up that cool green and blue that we were using. Okay, now we're at the bottom of the vase, which is in shadow. The light is catching this side of the vase in the. Um, So we'll, we'll, have, we'll let that be like that. Here we go. Um, now to make sure that we accentuate the light on this side of the vase, we will put a little bit of green and blue over here. Maybe a little mineral violet. Maybe we'll just want, we'll just lightly fade this out over here. But this is good. Make sure we do a little bit of a darker dark over here again. Negative shape painting. We're painting around the subject to make it appear. So if we didn't paint this tonal value, this little darker darker over here on this side of the vase then that part of the vase would not look um, as if it's there. So we want to make sure we we paint 
negative shape painting to keep our uh, our subject matter looking real. Let's do our uh, orange. Ah, oh, fire in that beautiful orange, cadmium orange. How how does that look? That looks great. Let's add a little cadmium red to the bottom section here of that cadmium orange and some yellow ochre. And then as we go up, let's fade fade a little bit and make it lighter up here. There we go. A little bit lighter up here. Even if you have to use the tissue and lighten it up a little bit on the top of the orange. Perfect. A little more cadmium red in the bottom. And then we can mix that on. We use a dry brush. We take our cleaner brush, dry it off on the tissue. And then we can take some straight paint right out of the pan, right out of the palette. And go right into the painting. Don't even worry about mixing it onto the palette. Just go straight into the palette and right into the paint. Onto the painting. And just dance the brush around a little bit here and there. Rinse off the brush again, dry it really well with some tissue, and then you can just fit, you know, move the paint around a little bit. Rinse off the brush again, dry it again with no paint, no water, and then just and then you get a nice sense of light on the top of the orange. Plenty of darker tonal value on the shadow area here. It's catching, the orange is catching more light on top. And then let's go in, we'll do a little bit of uh, shadowing on our coffee cup. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll use a little bit of alizarin crimson here in cadmium red. And maybe we'll just do some exciting red over here. Sometimes we don't always have to stick to the what we see in front of us. We can add different things to make it look better. That's what I'm doing here. I'm adding orange and red over here a little bit just to make things look better. And I'll go in with some uh, French Ultramarine Blue again, a little bit of green, a little bit of shadowing under there. Let's get back into some of the, uh, the greens up here. Let's uh, change our color a little bit, add a little more burnt umber or add some burnt umber to that uh, green, which would be sap green and olive green, just to give us a little bit of a different look. Keep things different, big leaf, small leaf. I was noticing my drawing, I was, everything was looking the same size. All the leaves here were looking the same size. I don't, that's not a good look. I think it's better to change things around a little bit, have things look different, non-symmetrical. So I had one larger leaf and one smaller one. And we'll put a little more green there. And some cerulean blue with some of that green. Then we can go into some uh, yellow ochre.
Then we can go back, we'll get our, we'll pick up our needlepoint brush, some raw umber and some of that yellow ochre, and dance the brush around a little bit just to get a little variety here. Then we'll go in, we'll <clears throat> get some more uh, sap green. And again, negative shape painting. I'm going to paint around that handle a little bit. And just splash and And I'll paint in that edge of this vase here. Maybe a shadow over here a little bit. Another little splash over here. And maybe some green over here just to balance things. So I'll put some green over here. All right, that is it. That is how simple we can have things in watercolor. Just taking a couple simple things like a coffee cup, an orange, you could pick, you know, lemons, limes, any kind of fruit, vegetable you like. You maybe put down a pitcher, maybe some leaves, some shapes of leaf forms next to it. You don't necessarily have to draw a bouquet of flowers here. You could just put something nearby just to, so you have a feeling of like, this is near a bouquet of flowers or some uh, a plant, some potted plants. Um, you can expand this idea, make it a full painting, and then add in a potted plant or whatever you would like. But I think the key is it's really fun in watercolor to just do small parts of things. And once you practice small parts of things a lot, then you're sort of already ready to do it in a larger painting. Let's say if you want to make a large painting to frame or to bring to a gallery, if you're maybe going to have a gallery show or if you have um, uh, someone commissions you to do a painting for them and they see your work and love it and they want you to paint a, a painting for them they, and they ask you if you can make it, uh, you know, 18 by 24. So if we're always working in smaller f format, that can be an issue. But if we paint our smaller format smaller parts of the larger hole, then we can take this idea, add a potted plant to it within a larger painting, and then we have our painting. A coffee cup, a vase, a couple pieces of fruit, and a potted plant. We've already painted this, so now all we have to do is practice doing the potted plant a few times, let's say, and then we can make a larger format, a larger painting, and then we have it. Here I think the only thing I would add is maybe just a little Maybe a little color just over the... Okay. All right. I hope we had fun here. And this is, again, you'll always hear me say it. Have fun with your watercolors. Enjoy. Let's work on small comps. And then eventually doing the bigger, uh, larger paintings is no problem. And if we peel off our tape, this makes a perfect uh, small composition to pin up on our wall next to our desk where we work, our studio, our office maybe. We work in the office and we want to put up a small painting.
painting. Maybe people come by, they love it, they want one too. You can create a couple of these, make you know, make prints of them or make a couple for our friends at work. Okay, again, let's uh, see if we could. Uh, As you can see, nothing too fancy, really just uh, very loose, very free, getting the basic shapes drawn in and then just, you know, putting in the color and really we used a lot of negative shape painting here. We painted around this white vase quite a bit. The top, around the handle, inside of the handle. So we did a lot of negative shape painting here, painting around an object to make it appear and as well over here on this side of the vase we added that paint here to make this side of the vase accentuate that so that we can see that clearly and lots of good color and fresh color and we had a lot of fun doing it alright everyone we'll see you on the next video bye bye